Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie. I'm a lead GP and a senior university clinical educator. In this video, we will discuss hypercholesterolemia and its management based on NHS England national guidance on lipid management 2020 and NICE guideline 2016. We will explore the use of Q-Risk, cholesterol target, how to monitor patient on statin, how to assess for statin-related muscle symptoms, and when to consider referral to lipid clinic. Coming right up. Cholesterol is the blood fat that is made naturally by the liver and is found in some food. We need cholesterol in order for the body to function, such as making hormone or vitamin D. High cholesterol is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, such as heart attack and stroke. We perform a lipid profile to check for cholesterol. Total cholesterol is a combination of HDL or high density lipoprotein, a good fat, and non-HDL, the bad fat. This has replaced the old LDL or low density lipoprotein as the primary target as we now know that other non-HDL are also harmful to the body. Patient can have healthy total cholesterol with unhealthy balance of HDL and non-HDL. HDL helps clearing cholesterol from the artery, while non-HDL would stick to the inside wall, known as atherosclerosis, leading to clock circulation. Triglyceride is another type of blood fat and is independent from total cholesterol and is linked to heart disease. Q-Risk is a prediction algorithm for cardiovascular disease using risk factors such as age, ethnicity, cholesterol level, blood pressure, BMI for example. Q-Risk at 10% means 10% risk of developing cardiovascular event such as heart attack over the next 10 years. Q-Risk calculation is not suitable in some patients with known cardiovascular risk such as type 1 diabetes, CKD, microalbuminuria, or with pre-existing cardiovascular disease. Primary prevention should be offered with moderate dose of high-intensity statin, such as a 12-hour statin, 20 mg once daily. These patients include those aged 84 and under, with Q risk of more than 10%, type 1 diabetes of more than 10 years, or with nephropathy, or with other CVD risk, those patients with CKD um, or with familial hypercholesterolemia. Patients aged over 85 can be offered statin, but we need to consider frailty, life expectancy, and comorbidities. Secondary prevention with high dose, high intensity statin, such as a 12 hour statin, 80 mg once daily, should be offered to patients with existing cardiovascular disease, such as myocardial infarction, stroke, or peripheral vascular disease. The aim of the treatment is to achieve more than 40% reduction of the non HDL from the baseline. General primary prevention target for cholesterol are total cholesterol below 5, non HDL below 4, LDL below 3, HDL more than 1 in men and more than 1.2 in women. Secondary prevention target with non HDL level below 2.5 or LDL level below 1.8. An LDL level below 2 is acceptable in most area. Baseline blood test should include non-fasting, lipid profile, renal function test, liver function test, HbA1c, and thyroid function. There are very few contraindications to starting statin, including active liver disease with transaminase of more than three times upper limit, pregnancy, and breastfeeding. CK or creatine kinase can be useful um, in assessing patients with unexplained generalized muscular pain but should not be performed in asymptomatic patients. 
In this group of patients, you want to do a baseline CK level. If the CK level is below five times upper limit, you can start the patient on statin. If the level is more than five times upper limit, you want to repeat the blood test again at seven days. And if the CK level is still high, then you should not start the patient on statin and you should seek a specialist advice. CK can also be used to assess statin-related muscle symptoms, which is defined as symmetrical pain or weakness in the proximal muscle, which is exacerbated by exercise. Measure CK level, and if CK level is more than four times upper limit, but less than 10 times upper limit, you want to stop starting for four weeks. Repeat the CK level, and if the CK level normalizes, you want to re-challenge the patient with lower dose statin, such as atovar statin 10 mg once daily, or rosuvar statin 5 mg. CK level of more than 50 times upper limit is considered rubral myelitis, and you want to seek specialist input. You can also consider stopping statin if the muscular symptoms are severe. You should also consider other musculoskeletal disorder, polymyalgia, vitamin D deficiency, by performing blood tests including bone profile, vitamin D, ESR and CRP. If statin is not tolerated, consider treatment with ezetimibe 10 mg. Ezetimibe can also be used as a dual therapy with lower dose statin when dose titration is not possible due to adverse reaction. Statin can be classified into different intensity group. Atovastatin and rosuvastatin are classified as high intensity due to its high ability to lower non-HDL. If the patient report adverse effects from statin, there are three options. Number one, discuss consideration of stopping statin until the symptom resolve and restart the statin again to see if the symptom is truly related to statin. Two, reduce the dose of the statin of the same intensity group. Three, change the statin to lower intensity group such as simvastatin, fluvastatin or pravastatin. Consider referral to a lipid clinic if the treatment is not tolerated with three different statins. In lipid clinic, there is an off-label standard practice of using rosuvastatin 5 mg weekly or three times a week in some circumstances. Lipid Clinic can also consider adding benpidoic acid and in secondary prevention group not reaching target, they can also consider using injectable therapy such as Inclisiran. We will discuss familial hypercholesterolemia and high triglycerides in a future video. Thank you for watching this video and why don't you check out a video I made on the oral management of type 2 diabetes based on NICE guideline 2022. Don't forget to click subscribe to my GP Team Academy channel and until next time.